Hello crafters and welcome to season two of Peter P Craft Presents brought to you by From Picture to Page and Beyond Paper Craft Shows. Now I'm your host Michelle Brown, Creative Director from Picture to Page which is our scrapbooking, mixed media art and paper crafts community. And we're so excited to have you here today because Peter P Craft presents our talented retailers and some guest artists to come and show you what they're up to, show off their products and really give you some inspiration so that you can get crafting and we can stay together while we're um, waiting for our craft shows to get back online. Now we've had a whole heap in season one and we've just kicked off season two. So for all the details, head over to our website from picture to page and beyond.com.au where you can see all of the replays, get all of the links and of course catch up on all the specials that our lovely retailers have been offering you. And while you're there, make sure you're on our mailing list so you'll get the end of week summary so you can check out all the products again and perhaps even then go back when you've bought your products and have another play. Now, whether you're watching here live with us on Facebook or a replay through Facebook on our website or on YouTube, we would love to know that you're there. So pop in the comments, say hi, of course, ask any questions and we're really looking forward to having a fantastic crafty afternoon. Now today... Peter P. Craft presents Mixed Media Art. That's right. So instead of me interviewing one of our talented retailers, I'm actually interviewing myself, demonstrating myself. Maybe next time we could get someone to come and interview me and ask me some questions. But if you do have any questions for me, pop them in the comments. So I think last time I was here, I talked about how I started the Mixed Media Art website about 10 years ago. And this week I've really been thinking about art journaling because we started classes in our Mount Waverley studio and we were talking about our origins of art journaling and I think um, it really more started off as altered books and mixed media and then sort of wound its way into art journaling. Now a lot of people sort of want to ask what art journaling is and to me it can be many, many things. So it's really just creating work in some sort of a book or a journal, all those pages that we might bind together and there are a whole heap of mixed media art techniques that we can use in our art journals. Now whether we do it as sort of to practice our drawing or to use it as expression or just to create something, there's so many different ways that we can approach our art journaling. So today I really wanted to look at embedding images into our journals because sometimes we find that it can be easy to come up with some pretty backgrounds, we can splash some paint around, but then how do we take that next step and create that focal point or add that image? So that's what we're going to talk about today. Okay, so we're going to talk about embedding our images into art journaling. So we're going to look at where our images come from, how we think about placement of those images into our art journals, and then finally how to embed them, what some of the tools and techniques that we can do to make it actually look like it's part of our layout rather than something we kind of just stuck on and looks a little bit like a kid's collage. So these are some of the things we're going to use. So let's get started. So firstly, where do we get our images from? Now, for those of you that are crafting, just like we collect stamps, we also can collect images. So there's a whole heap of places we can get our images from. It might be something that you draw yourself. It could be something that you stamp. You can get it from a magazine or a, uh, from photos that you've taken. Or there's a whole heap of ephemera that you can buy as well. So there's many, many art, mixed media artists that have created some lovely, lovely products for us. So Scrap FX have got a range of rice papers and um, transparencies that are really great to using. So we've got Dina Wakely and she's got some tissue papers as well as Dina's got some gorgeous collage collectives and we're going to use one of those today. So this comes with a whole heap of sort of ideas and images, things that we could use, some colours and different things that really give us a jumping off point. So we're not so much starting with a blank canvas. Now we've got um, Art by Marlene has got some gorgeous collage papers for backgrounds or we could use them as focal points as well. She's also got a range of gorgeous um, rice papers and these are fantastic because they're easy to either cut out or just put a bit of um, a damp paintbrush around it and then we can tear it really easily and that helps really feather our images into our background as well. And we've got some Dilusions colour collage sheets and then um, other die cuts from Marlene as well. So one thing to consider when you're putting your image in is how you want to sort of get it there. You can either cut it out or like we said, perhaps tear the edges if it's tissue or if it's rice paper. Now if it's one of these gorgeous books where you're cutting it out or whether it's already pre-punched, one of the little tips that I've got from 
um, three years of paper crafting. And for those that do paper toll, it's getting something like a black marker, or here I've got a grey one, or it might be a dark blue, or um, a brown, is just to go around the edge of that, so that when we stick it down, it helps blend our colours. So I'm just using the side of this pit marker, just taking that white edge off. Can you see how it just takes that white edge off? And it's one of those little pro tips that really just helps embed the image into your art journaling because it's not so white around the outside anymore. So it doesn't matter so much what colour you do it. And if you've got lots of bright colours, then perhaps a grey might be better than a black because black can be overwhelming really, really quickly. So there's lots of places that we can get our ephemera and collage images from. So let's have a play with some. So here is a background that I've prepared earlier, one that's nice and dry. We've got some layers of paint. We've added some features with some art foamies. And then what I did was go through Dina Wakely's collage and found an image that I really liked because it had a bit of orange in it that helped tie it into the background. So I pulled the page out and then to give it this nice soft edge, I got a wet paintbrush drew around and then just gently pulled it apart. So that works really well with paper, with tissue, with a rice paper. And we do that when we've got an edge that we don't want a hard and fast edge to the image. So rather than giving it that, that um, border that we did with the marker, we can give it a nice feathered edge so that it helps us blend it in. So what we're gonna do is look at how we put our image onto the page. And one of the things we want to consider is the rules of thirds. So if we've got, there we go, can you sort of see all of that? If we imagine that each page is in thirds, then we've got these points that we tend to focus our eyes on. So in this image, I think here is quite a focal point, her eye, because we love faces and we always look at faces. So I'm going to put her eye sort of somewhere here in that position that's a third of the way in and a third of the way down. Now I'm going to use my absolutely favorite gel medium, the Crafters Workshop. This one was recommended to us by Cheryl Boglioli when she came out many moons ago, not last Sandown show, but the one before. And what I'm gonna do is how we'd collage all of our elements is put the gel medium down onto the page. And particularly if you're using tissue or a thin, rice paper you want to be really careful with it. this is actually quite thick and robust so I think I'll be able to get away with it anyway so just check we've got enough down we don't have to use a brush but preferably an old brush not one of your good paint brushes and then we wanted it about there so we're going to stick it down now if this was tissue or rice paper what we then want to do is add a little bit on top and start in the middle and work our way out to make sure that we've got any wrinkles out like I said, this is quite thick card, so I'm not too worried about it. It's not going to run. And then just giving it a little bit of pressure as we go to get it to stick. You can also use your fingers. And one of the other tips, if it's an image that you really don't want the, um, the lines on from the brush, what you can do is get a little bit of water just dampen your fingers and then just really gently, because we don't want to dilute the gel medium, is just run your fingers over and that will help take some of the brush strokes out. So particularly perhaps through her eyes. And there we go. So let me get that out of the way. Because we don't want a disaster. Okay, so there we go. We've got that in position and then we're going to leave that to dry before we do anything else. But when we do art journaling, we like to consider both pages as well. So I've got another sheet here. And this one's got quite a few different colours on it. So I could sort of um, consider which ones would work. Do I want to add some more green? But again, that but green's different to that one. Do I want to add some pinks or purples? And the answer is it's a little bit hard to tell. So what I'm going to do is tear these up. And again, tearing them up gives us a nice edge. Now when we tear towards or away from this, it gives us a different finish as well. So you want to be conscious of which way the paper grain goes. And then also, oh, can I just sneak in there? There we go. So 
So let's tear all these up. And then we can audition them. So that's what's great about collage elements is we're not committing to anything just yet. We're just having a play. We're just getting a sense of where should things go. So, so there we go. We've got that one. Hmm, maybe, maybe not. Would we want to center it? Would we want to do something else to it? Hmm. I'm thinking the purple and the pink so aren't quite as much of a match as I would like. So again, let's tear this one. I know sometimes just tearing and being a bit haphazard can be a little bit scary for some people, but it's okay, it's just paper. We can always make another one. There, oops, there we go. So now that we can look at that and think, oh yeah, maybe. But of course what we're seeing is that it's not really standing up from the background. So we'll certainly talk about how we can do that in a minute. So I think, I do like it centered, but again here, so maybe if I, again, let's position it. What does it look like here? Hmm? She could be looking at it. You know, how we position our images helps tell our story. That's a little bit close. Hmm, like she's blowing a kiss. Now actually sitting there, that helps tie these two areas of color together. And I actually think I like it their best. So again, it's personal preference, even though there's some general guidelines and rules around how we lay things out. So the middle, I don't mind, but I think when I bring it here, it tells a bit more of an interesting story. And then I might be able to re reinforce this line, which is about a third of the way up to help connect that story. So let's get that stuck down. So again, layer on the bottom. So these pages have beautiful both sides. We're just going to stick with the heart one today. And again, sitting it down, working from the middle out. And we really don't need a lot, this gel medium. You know, and it's not like a card, it's not going to be interactive, so it doesn't need a lot. And there we go. Now I'm going to pop the lid back on because we want to keep that nice and fresh the paintbrush into some water and now we will let that dry and get on to our second part so we've talked about where we source our images from we've talked a little bit about you know creating that nice edge and placement so thinking of a rule of thirds so next we're going to look at embedding that into our so here's one that I made earlier today and I've let it dry so that I can use my pens over it because there's very few hard and fast rules in art journaling. But unless you really want to ruin your pens, don't go using your good pens over wet paint. So I've cut three images out here from the Dilutions pack. So this one comes with a whole heap of different collage sheets. And if you're a fan of Diane's, then you'll see all these sort of different wacky shapes. So we've cut them out. I've then used my grey marker to edge them so you can see that they blend in quite nicely. And I've put this one in this top right in that third position, this one down sort of more in the bottom left, and then this one here to anchor it against the ground. So there's three different ways that we can, well, there's probably more than three, but three ways that we'll talk about today. So firstly, looking at it and sort of bringing some of that outside colour in or some of the colour from that out as well. Sometimes we might create backgrounds that we haven't necessarily thought about images, but as we get towards doing our images, we want to think a little bit more about it. Now here I've got the Dina Wakely paint that I know I created this background with, so I know the colours will match. I'm just going to put a little bit down there. And then what I'm going to do is just add a little bit of colour with a dry brush through there. And this is quite a dry brush, so we might just add a little bit more through here as well, just giving it some little bit of highlights. And because it's such a dry brush, we can sort of feather out the end because we don't want anything too hard and fast. And a little bit of paint can go a nice long way. So there we go, we're starting to see that embedding itself into the background by carrying over the same colours. Okay, another way that we can do it is by giving it an outline and giving it some um, sort of a position on the page. So even though this is an item, we can see it's got a base. So we want to consider how do we anchor that. So we can do that through, you know, creating a bit of a horizon. 
if you look at some of your sort of childhood images, quite often that's got you know, a few cute little lines around it. And so what I'm using here is the Stabilo All Pencil, and this is water activated. So what I'm going to do is draw around it, and then we can grab a paintbrush and a little bit of water, and then give that a bit of a place too. So I've got just a nice fine brush and a little bit of water. Now I don't want too much water, so I'll blot that off. I often just use the back of my hand just to check that it's not too wet and then just use it. Now this can be a little bit scary when you do it the first time because it seems like suddenly you've got this huge black mess where you didn't want it. But again, this is all part of getting to know your materials because as this dries, it will lighten up and it will continue to be water activated. So we can go back through and continue, oops, now I've stopped it, continue to add or subtract so that we're happy with it. I'll turn it around a little bit. And activate it there. And so you can see, while that's quite dark, you can see here that that's already started to dry off and doesn't look anywhere near as scary. So that helps giving it a place. And like we said, these lines we drew, we can water activate those as well, just to give it a little bit of a position on the page. Now, this is still a little bit dark up here for my liking, so cleaning off the brush. Again, just going back in and feathering that out a little bit. And let's let that dry and have a look at it and see if we need to add a little bit more. Um, during our art journaling class, we were talking about different ways to look at our artwork and sometimes we need to step back from it, sometimes we need to sleep on it before we come back and look at it. Sometimes it's a bit hard when we've got that critical eye to really see what's going on. Okay, so with our third shape, I've got two of my favourite, the black food ball pen and the white Posca marker. I'll give that a shake. And what we want to do is continue some of the patterns here out into the background so it doesn't look quite so stark. So we can see we've got some lines here. Make sure that paint's dry. So let's continue those lines. Just continue and then seeing. And this is where you can just spend all sorts of time when everything's dry, just doodling, adding marks. It's a good way to get to know your pens. It's a good way to improve your hand steadiness. Now we can see, oh, let's you know, continue on to here. Again, that helps make it look continuous. And we've got, and also running over it also just helps give us that feel. That's the arc that we're trying to produce. And then the same down here. Now we don't want it to match up too much. There we go. Now we've got some lines here. Some lines here. And so we want to look for those little bits of patterns and if there's nothing clear, then we can add some. We could do dots, we could do lines, we could do crosses, we could do arches. And then we've got lines going each and every way. So there we go, we're starting to embed that by bringing that across. Now if we also did something similar with the white, again going over it to give us that feel and then continuing that out. It's like we've got a bit of a star shape here, so whether we you know, go over that and iterate it. And then just highlight that. And you can also see I've got a few little dots here, so we could just continue a motif. And again, we want to think about odds as well. So we've got five dots here, three dots over there. Is there somewhere else that we could do some dots? Hmm, I've got one there. Do we need a bit more? Maybe we could continue on. And this is a challenge. We don't want to overthink this part too much. So other than using straight black and white, we can also get some coloured markers. So these are the same brand as the grey one I used earlier. So they're the Faber-Castell pit markers. And I love these because they've actually got Indian ink in them. So that goes really well and it helps us blend and smooth. So here I've got the yellow, an orange and a red. So 
mat. So if you wanted to create some marks, you know, what could we do? So perhaps here, we want to create some crosses and put them in a few different places. And then we've got some circles here. So three over there. One there. And again, we don't really want to overthink it too much. Oh, do we need any more? It's hard to know sometimes, isn't it? Maybe a few little dots. And then with the red, what can we do with the red? We've got sort of lines. So this was collaged with the tissue underneath the paint. And we can see, no, don't avoid the, dry, the wet paint. Oh, that's all pretty dry. So coming through and pulling that line up. Following a few of those lines. And again, just reinforcing that pattern that's behind it. So we had someone ask the other day, you know, why put all these layers into your mixed media? But what it's sometimes hard to see on videos that you see much more in real life is that these layers just give it that richment, that visual texture. So as we add different layers in, so even though we've got red on red, we can still see that, particularly while it's wet, sticking through. So we've got some lines here. Where else could we put some lines? You know, maybe we could add some in down here. What else? I'm not sure. So we've got a little bit of red through here. Oh, we've got this nice slide here. Maybe this could do with a few little dots. Hmm. So there we go. This is getting towards being something. You can see now, it's probably a shame I didn't take the image before I started, how we're really starting to embed those images into our art journal. So now this one's sitting much further back because we've got the paint across the top. This one is now really standing out because we've dulled the background to help it stand out. And then we've got this one, which by creating the color and the pattern across it really is sitting back into that background. So it's not sort of as stark as it's stuck on. So when you're doing your art journaling, really have a look and just thinking about your images and your focal points and what stories they can tell. Like I said, having them there so you can audition them, try to think different things but also not overthink it. So I'm going to add a little bit more here because now that we've dried, you can see we could probably just be a little bit heavy handed with it and help this little puppy sit out a little bit further. And one of the other things that we learned when we had um, Marlene out was to not just use the images, but actually add your own bit to it as well so that it's more unique. So again, taking something white and perhaps reinforcing some of those patterns. How do we make it our own? So that we know that when someone else looks at it, it will be different to how they've used it. We've got little bits of yellow here too, so where we can sort of enhance those a little bit, bringing those to the forefront. And of course, we've already got lots of red. So we've got I think we could probably add a little bit more yellow over here and then maybe oh guess what i did actually think to grab the other two paints that i'd used here so i've got the yellow i can find that brush that i had the red on maybe we just need a little bit more yellow paint over here as well so sometimes people get really frustrated when they start out with a art journal and it doesn't look as they wanted it to but that's okay here we're not starting out with any ideas Okay, so Lynn has just asked, what brands are the pens? So my black pen here is a food ball, and we have these in the Mixed Media Art Store. These are the ones that Dina Wakeley loves, and it gives us this really nice, rich, thick black outline. These ones are Posca pens, so these are available at your office works, and these are great because they've got paint in them, and they're really good for getting that solid line. The, um, the ultimate white pen or marker is something we're always looking for. And these markers are Faber-Castell pit pens. And they come in a few different thicknesses. These are the big brushes. They also come in finer brushes as well as bullet point. And like I said, I love these because these are blendable. So when we get them over a surface, we can blend them before they dry. So again, all part of getting to know your... Um, 
your art supplies is to make sure you're using them as well. Okay. Now, so we've got a little bit of paint here. Don't get too distracted with the comments. We've got, oh, I brought a clean paintbrush. How clever of me. So I've added a little bit of yellow here because looking at it, I've got yellow here, little bits here, but I think I just need that little bit more. So let's, again, without overthinking, add just some little bit of yellow in here. Now what we can do is, you know, if we're not, if we don't want too much, we can use a kitchen tissue to take some of that away. But then also just adding in that little bits of yellow. Because again, when we look at a layout, we're not necessarily looking at the components, we're looking at the overall layout. But now we see we can get got yellow in a few places. We've got some yellow marks. We've got our orange through here. We've got some orange marks. And then you can see how we've really embedded, oh, now that I've got orange, Add a little bit more there too. Because these are so versatile paints, it's really easy just to add a little bit of a really dry brush. So this brush is really dry. Just use the tiniest bit of paint. There we go. And you can see here I've also left some white spaces as well. Now, as you get into art journaling, you really just want to check what your own preferences are. Sometimes we want to have it quite solid. Um, where's some? So here's one that we've got lots of prints over. We've got some gel print cutouts, surprise, surprise, some transfer of the foils, but we've some washi tape, but we've covered that up. It's quite solid. Whereas there's other times, here's a, one of my faces that I've been doing. He's a bit sad, one of our practice ones. Um, or again, creating some more open space. So this was some leftover paint on doing something else. Because we don't want to close that up yet because it's still a bit wet. So deciding what your preferences are. Do you want to leave some open spaces or do you not? So like I said, we've added the three images and we've embedded them by bringing that colour over the top to help pushing it back. Creating an outline or a shadow to help bring it forward. And here we've added some color and extended that pattern to really help embed it as well. So it doesn't look like it's just stuck on. And often when you see people just starting out, that's one of the things you see is you're kind of an image stuck in the middle. And particularly if you've come from card making, that's what we do. We create layers and we build them up. But in art journaling, we want to be a bit more subtle and we want to bring it backwards. Okay, let me set that one aside. How are we going four times? So this is the one that I did a bit earlier. So we already had a background that was done with gel prints, with layer brayers, with some art foamies. All of those available are over at the store at mixmediaart.net. And what we've done now is collaged one of the Dina Wakely ladies from her collage collectives. And now what I want to do, what I want to do is add, you know, a little bit more. So again, using our Stabilo pencil, you know, following those lines and then bringing them out. So this is where your sketchbooks come in really handy to practice your lines and your work. Because we find we do develop a muscle memory, we do get better. So how do we just go and bring that through there and really help embedding that into the page? Because really she almost needs the other half of her face here somewhere. Okay. Which one are we using? This one's clean. No, this one has black on it. Okay, let's get that a little bit cleaner. And when I'm working in art journey, I quite often will work in two or three or maybe even more. So you can work on one, set it aside to dry. Uh, I follow the Dina Wakely School of um, heat guns saying that we really shouldn't be accelerate drying unless you know we're really somewhere where it's cold and we're having trouble and we're in a hurry as much as possible let's just get a little bit done set it aside so that it can dry and then we can come back to it and I find also it, it gives us momentum so we're sort of not stopping and starting we can say okay we've done it here where else can we use it and that was how I did my last series of faces, was I had a whole heap. And once I had paint mixed, I just kept going. Okay, that one's probably a little bit further up than I would have liked now that I'm looking at it. But again, 
just creating layers and if we really don't like it we can really wet it and then scrub most of it off and you can see then how that's got so much color in it we can then pull it through the paintbrush okay so what do we need over here what have I got I've got a pink one whether that's going to work it's so like I said maybe if I thought oops not dry is perhaps putting some washi tape or something to give it a bit of a border but again we can do the same actually that's got orange behind it hasn't it so what if we create look at the orange look at that line there and sort of extend that through here as well I don't want to get too much black on it just yet okay so we've got a heart We've got, oh, maybe it needs more of an outline. So again, you're just using your pens nice and slowly. Highlighting that. A few little lines, make it look like it's sort of been sewn on. And then we've done that. Where else could we add those lines? So perhaps, you know, we could add a few over here. I mean, like it's sort of stitching that on. Perhaps we could add some black circles over here and we've got three we go odds so three or five if we've already done more than one got some interesting white circles here that's not quite dry so we can perhaps reiterate some of those and then sort of copy something through here as well okay so again if you've added one or two and you don't like it add a whole heap Let's not, <laughs> let's not get too precious about it. And again, don't overthink, just keep going. Okay, so I've added some white dots there. Where else could we add some white dots? What about down here? Okay, then do we need some on this page? Okay, what else, what else, what else? So we've got some orange lines through here, so we need a few more. Now I'm wondering, and again, a bit of experiment, we put the gel medium on the top. So if I put this on, will I be able to, yeah, see how I can use my finger, maybe a knot of a dirty one, and just adding it on, but then the, um, the gel medium allows me to smudge it. It's not sinking straight into the card, so it's allowing me to add it, but then smudging it so it's not quite as solid. And this is where you could just keep going. So I love these pit pens. You can really just use them to build up colours. I'm finding them really good for adding layers. I've got a bit of a blue one. What can we add in for blue? So again, make sure your fingers are clean. Once these pit pens are dry, they won't react, but we haven't quite got everything dry enough yet. So bit here. And see how it's starting to really change the look of it. And that's what's great about art gel and it's easy to add your own personal touches. And that's why Dina and Diane and Marlene have created all these collage elements to give us jumping off points. Hmm. Okay. Excellent. So there we go, we can see how we've really started to embed that even though, you know, maybe it does need a little bit more. Okay. Don't panic. Got the lid. Um, so yeah, whether we needed a little bit more orange in here. So just my orange brush, this one. Now I'm not sure which orange that was. But again, it doesn't matter because we can add a little bit on and then if we want that, we can just keep going with it. So drying off the brush. And just adding a little bit on to help take that edge away. And you can see here I've put different amounts of gel medium. It's actually going a slightly different colour, but that's okay. Now while I've got that on my brush, again, where else could we add some? Just to help. 
blend it in. It mightn't be conscious to those who are just looking at it as a casual observer, but we know because when you start looking at colours, like, okay, let's look at orange, 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 pink, 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 pink. Oh, so maybe we could add a little bit more pink in here. What does it look like? Does it need a bit more pink? And then you see how we can just keep building up the layers. So it really embeds it back into the background a little bit. So it's not looking like a preschool. Now we need to be careful with that because that pencil is still water activated. So if I do too much rubbing on that, we'll start getting the black out of it, which will help blend it, but may not be the look with it. We're going for excellent okay i think that is nearly done what else do we need we didn't quite get back to the pink pen didn't we so a little bit there perhaps a little bit over to reinforce those black marks over there okay so mary's asked are the pit pens waterproof yes once they dry they are it's the indian ink just like you get in the little vials so once you've once it's dry so I've got a bit down here that's dry, so see now that that won't blend out at all. That's quite solid. So yeah, once it dries, and like I said, it needs to go over paint or a gesso or the gel medium, and then it's really easy to blend, but once it's dry, that's it. It is staying there. So you've got a small working window, and then it's it. So now am I going to be able to get everything back in? So just to summarise, so we talked about get our little lady in there. We talked about you know creating where do we get those images from? So we can buy them whether it's rice paper, whether it's collectives, tissue paper, punch outs. If we're going to use punch outs or so we cut them out, we want to use something to take the edge off. If it's tissue paper or rice paper or image, we can use our wet paintbrush to um, pull it off. And then to help embed our images, we can use paint, use that colour over the top to help pull it back. Give it a bit of a border so that it stands out or find a pattern or a feature. We could always stamp across it as well so that we've got the same background on the back and the front and then repeat that somewhere else as well so that we know we've got some recurring patterns. Excellent. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that session on embedding images into your art journal. If there's any other questions, pop them in the comments and I'll, of course, be popping in and out over the next few days. Now, I've got a special for our picture to page viewers. If you head over to our website, mixmediaart.net and click on the online shop or also the links are here in the video, we've got 15% off all of our collage elements until Wednesday. So it doesn't matter what you are after, all of our collage elements, whether it's tissue, whether it's rice paper, whether they're cutouts, whether they're collage books or transparencies all of those are 15% off and it will pop up in your checkout so I hope you've really enjoyed that session I hope it gives you something to little think about a little something to think about and not get too caught up in your art journaling and just picking out sometimes less is more so picking three colors picking three images knowing your art products so you know which paints are translucent you know which paints are opaque you know which markers will spread with water which ones won't and then really just using that to build up layers and it's your art journal you don't need to share it with anyone but of course if you do want to share with it we've got the paper craft posse group and now mixed media art studio has also got their own facebook group so i'll make sure i pop a link to that over on our um, facebook page as well if you want to come in and share some of your art journaling kits the other thing is we are starting classes here in our mount waverley studios in victoria australia so next week we've got a junk journal kit that we've got to put together one of the scrap fx junk journals and then from july we're jumping into our art journaling sojourn a six week class of stepping through different stages of art journaling and really creating a small group and a community that we can um, share with each other and build on our knowledge as well so all of those details are over at the website mixmediaart.net click on the classes are back at mount waverley and all the details are there and you can sign 
up. So this is Michelle signing off, off, of course, putting my picture to page hat on. Thank you all so much for joining us. Any questions, leave them in the comments. And of course, for all the picture to page and P2P Craft Presents news, head over to that website from picture to page and beyond.com.au where you will find all of the videos in season one, all of the season two videos and all of the links to the products as well. So in the next hour or so, Mixed Media Art video will be up there and then listing all the products as well. So you will be able to find them without any trouble. So this is Michelle signing off. We hope you have a crafty day.